All right, another section. Woohoo! Later in the night, earlier in the morning. Whichever way you want to look at it, but in this section right here. What? Oh, please don't sing. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. <laughs> oh, please. Don't do that to me. Okay, in this section right here, what we're going to be talking about, shape modifiers generating geometry. There is a bug crawling across my screen that one of my students is very concerned will actually appear on this VTM. <laughs> Not to fear. I don't think it'll make it on the VTM. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to be looking at is... Um, how we can take some of these shapes that I showed you how to work with in the last section and use a few different modifiers to turn them into 3D geometry. Modifiers that we're going to be taking a look at. We're going to look at extrude. We looked at it briefly in the last section, but now we're going to look a little bit closer. We're going to look at bevel. We're going to look at bevel profile, and mm -hmm. we're going to look at lathe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing, uh, let's just keep this nice and simple. I'll come in here, and we will create a donut. Everybody likes a donut. Woo! I love donuts. So Donut. there is our Donuts shape. Donuts love me. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> so I'm just kidding. So let's go ahead and come over here to the modify panel. And what I want to do is apply the extrude modifier. So I'll just go ahead and drop this down and hit E. And we'll come on down to extrude. And you'll see the moment that I actually applied the extrude to it. Even though there's no amount at the moment, you can see that this thing is paper thin. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'll go ahead and come in here, and I'll start up in the amount, and you'll see how this is rather going to control, depending if I go positive or negative, it's going to control the height, if you will, of this new geometry that I've created. All right, so I've just, by extruding, go ahead, give me a way, define extruding for me. Uh, it's kind of like pulling a flat surface out. Okay. Kinda, it's, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. So uh, and let's go ahead and hit F4. Um, right now, my segments is set to 1. If I set it to 2, see how it splits this in half? Mm -hmm. Set it to 3, 4. So this is just adding detail Whoa. inside your uh, inside the actual new geometry. Okay? Pretty excited there, aren't we there, Grizz? <laughs> Hang on, buddy. It's all good. <laughs> okay, then uh, moving on down next. I'm not going to go through everything. I'll, I'll go through quite a few of these, though. Um, capping section, we have uh, cap start, cap end. But first, let me go ahead and tell you that the cap, this would be the cap right here, cap end. Uh, the cap that gets generated, we have two different types. We have a morph type and a grid type. Uh, by coming over here and clicking between the two, you can see that it looks exactly the same. Basically, it comes down to the way that it's generated. Um, now I'm getting really technical here. Let's just say that by setting it to morph, if you're generating several of these guys, it's going to be used for doing morphs. Um, like facial animation as an example, or one object morphing to another object. Let me say it that way. Uh, it's best if you use the morph type so that your top up here, uh, your caps actually morph better. Otherwise, you'll end up with some problems. A problem is this doesn't render out as well. Uh, the grid will actually render uh, much cleaner. So we're not using this, of course, for morphing, so we'll put the type over here to grid. Also, if I uncheck the cap end, you'll see that it's turned the cap top off up here. Of course, you don't see the back side of the, uh, of the faces. Um, of the geometry from the other side. Again, that's because the normals are pointing outwards, and if you look at the back side of a surface, uh, you'll just see right through it. it doesn't, if the normal doesn't face the camera, you don't see it, unless we go put a double-sided material on this or something else. Uh, if we rotate this over so that we're looking at the bottom, you can see that we still have cap on the bottom because cap start is still checked. So if I come in here and uncheck this, so now we can see all the way through. So now we've got some sort of really freaky tire. So that's what our caps does for us. And now our, uh, our output type, we can output it to a patch type, we can output it to mesh, and we can also output it to MURBS. Okay, now uh, basically the, the different output types that we have, you'll notice not always does like MURBS really work real good. But the different uh, output types is just so that uh, if we come up here and we convert our object type into a patch or a mesh or MURBS, uh, it's been properly formatted, if you will. But anyways, that's uh, output types. Uh, we'll leave it on mesh, which is by default. Of course, we have generate mapping coordinates. We took a brief look at that uh, earlier when dealing with uh, renderable splines. Um, generate material IDs. I'm not going to get into Well, I guess I can mention it real quickly. Uh, material IDs, uh, if we're going to go in there and assign a material that... Um, uh, multi-material, if you will, that's going to uh, rely off of material IDs to determine which material in, in, a, uh, in one of these special type materials, which we will get into a little bit later on, is going to lie on which surface. Basically, we generate 
an ID for one of our caps, we generate an ID for our side, and we generate an ID for the bottom in case we want to assign different textures, if you will, to the three. Okay, I, I just I'm just kind of making that as um, lame in terms as possible, just because it's something that we haven't got into yet. Um, and then finally, smooth. Right now, smooth is checked. Uh, let's go ahead and hit F4 to turn it out. Let's uncheck smooth, and you can see now that we've got faceted. So. Smooth basically puts all these guys in the same smoothing group, and it makes all of the uh, the polygon faces look nice and smooth, as you see here. So that's the extrude. Big thing, though, is just being able to control the amount and the number of segments in it. Okay? Pretty simple? Yes. Okay. Cool. So let's go ahead and delete the extrude. So And let's change our thing again to some sort of color. It's easy to see. And the next one I want to show you is a bevel, which is just like the extrude, except with a little bit of extra capabilities. So I'll come down here to bevel. Okay, and you'll see it starts out just like before with the extrude, basically just it's filled in as a surface or as a piece of geometry, but it's paper thin. So uh, now how do we actually do this? Well, you can see the bevel down here has got um, level 1, level 2, and a level 3. Start with level 1, and let's give it a little bit of height so that you can see this a little bit easier. All right, so there you go. Now we'll come back down to all of these settings in just a second. Again, we've got capping, start and end, and we also have the cap type, morph and grid, just like we saw earlier with the extrude. Um, then we have the surface, or these uh, beveled edges that we're making. Are they going to be linear sides or are they going to be curved? And it's easier to see this uh, when we actually get to it. And then we're going to smooth across the different levels. We'll talk about the levels here in just a second. The ability to generate mapping coordinates, of course. And, uh, and then keep lines from crossing because as you get in here and you start playing with these outlines, it's very easy to start getting, um, <coughs> getting the actual edges to want to crisscross with one another. And this is a bad thing. And by keeping lines from crossing, we can determine a separation amount to prevent that from happening. But let's go ahead and get down to the meat of using the bevel, the bevel uh, modifier. You notice how I put a height on it. Um, I have a start outline up over here. Start outline actually allows me to come in here and control the overall size. Uh, if you leave that at zero, there will be no uh, amplification or no increase or decrease in the size of the original uh, shape that you're applying this bevel to. So we'll leave it at zero. We've already given it a height on level one, this being level one. Now we can create an outline. Do we want to bring it down? Do we want to bevel it outwards? So let's go ahead and just bevel it outwards like so. Okay. Now, let's come down here and say, yes, we want to use level 2, and we can give level 2 some height. Okay, so we can bring that up, and then we can, if we wanted to, we could bevel this guy. I mean, we could really come in here and do some really weird stuff. By the way, see as I bring that down there, how we get the crossing of the edges? So if I say keep lines from crossing, that prevents that from happening. That's what I was talking about a minute ago. But, yeah, it's very helpful. But I'm going to be a good boy and just come down here, and I'm not going to take this guy and, and adjust the outline on. In fact, I'm just going to give it just a little bit of height. It's like a toilet room. And all because you went to the bathroom five minutes ago. Oh Everything's yeah. got to look like a toilet now. So the next thing I'm going to tell it is go ahead and use a third level, last level that we can use. And I'll give it another height. In fact, I'll give it the 15.5. 15.5. Same as we used for level one. And you saw how I did 6.4 beveling out. Well, let's do 6.4 beveling in, so that means we got to go minus, so negative 6.4, so you see how this guy has gone in. So this is the shape that we've created, okay, just from that simple donut. Now, to do a couple of neat things, um, you see how I have the hard edges in there, right? Mm -hmm. Right there, straight, and straight again. I can come over here and say use curved sides, but the problem is I've got to have uh, more segments to actually curve it. So what I can do is come down here to segments and say, all right, give it two. Well, it's already creating some curvature. Three, four, and that's starting to look pretty good. But we still have hard lines in here. So I can just say smooth across all my levels. And so now you can see how it's smoothed across all levels. Okay? So bevel is an awesome, absolutely awesome modifier. Like you saw me use it earlier when I was working with the text, just to go in there real quick give it that 3D look that's rounded and beveled and this looks great because having the bevels in there is really important when working with geometry because bevels will pick up highlights from light. A lot of beginners get in there and make the mistake of making sure or making everything hard edged and that's just not how the real world is. Real world everything's you know kind of rounded off and that allows so surfaces to actually pick up highlights from lighting. So um, Yes, yes, exactly, as Nick is now showing us a demonstration on the table, which the students can't see. 
Okay, so just in case you forgot that. Not a bloody good that so does us, <laughs> Julia. <laughs> Holy right. rounded bevels, buzz man. So <laughs> okay. All right, so anyways, there's a, quick <laughs> so the, there's a quick look at working with uh, bevel. Next thing I want to show you, let's look at the bevel profile. Bevel profile is another really awesome thing. As a matter of fact, we need to go ahead and delete that guy altogether. Now I'm going to come into a top view. I see that, Nick. And come over here to create rectangle. And let's draw out a little rectangle here. Uh, something like that. And let's adjust our corner radius just to round it a little bit. Now, I have a feeling Slay is going to really like this. You like that so far, right? Okay, I'm so I'm turn on by that. Are you? Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so now, now what I'm going to do is switch over to my front view, and I'm going to draw a profile of this. So if I wanted to, I could just kind of zoom in over here, say line, and let's say, and I, and here's how I like to do things. I'm working really quick. Just come in here, um, just make some sort of general shape. Yeah, that's general. Art. Shape out of both <laughs> of those. <laughs> so. No making fun of my shape. It's a salmon. <laughs> it's a salmon shape, I think. Not like right. any salmon I've ever seen. So, hey, 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 hey. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm just going to close this back up. And now what I want to do, of course, is come in here, and I'm just going to simply go over to Modify, come down to Vertex, and now I'm start working with some of my different vertices. Like, let's start with this guy, and I'm going to right-click and change his type to Bege, grab our Move tool, so and, yeah, just kind of round it. Uh, maybe take this guy and bring him up. This guy, of course, I could turn snapping on, but nah, we're just kind of in a hurry here. Take this guy, maybe make him a bege corner so that I can grab this side and just give it a little roundedness like that. Um, this, let's do another bege corner on him, and let's bring him in like that. And we'll leave him something. Well, actually, that's not so steep, so let's do the same thing over here. And I can just maybe bring this guy down just a little bit, something like that. And so now we've created something a little bit more scary, if you will. <laughs> uh, one more thing. I'll just grab all these and maybe pull them out right out of there. All right, so now I'm getting picky. I'll just go ahead and make this bichet corner real quick. And let's just come in here and grab this guy and round that. And this how's our bottom look. Uh, we could do the same down here real quick, Bege corner, and round that. All right, so this is our little shape that we've created, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and come over here into a perspective view, and let's turn off our grid, rotate this around. And why has it always got to be? Let's come in here, and let's just tell it to go and apply that color. There we go. And now I want to apply a modifier. Okay. And now what I want to do is come down to Bevel Profile, Bevel Profile, and you'll notice that it is already filled in solid, just like we saw earlier with the extrude and the, just the regular bevel one. But now I've got a button that says Pick Profile. So I'm going to pick this guy as my profile. And so now I've got this, but the problem is it's actually running the wrong way, right? So if I wanted to, notice Bevel Profile can be expanded so that I can pick the profile gizmo, uh -huh. and now I can rotate him. Look oh, at that. Cool. Updates it real time. So, yeah, I can so do it in any angle that I wanted to, actually. So actually, that's kind of cool right there. Or I can just come in here and simply stand it up. Go to 180, oh. 79, 80, 180 degrees, and there you go. Okay? So definitely pretty cool. And, uh, of course, we still have keep lines from crossing, same thing as you saw before. We can generate mapping coordinates, and then we also have the ability for capping, for starting in, and the types of capping as well. Okay? Does this make cool. sense? Yes. Gotcha okay. so far. Cool. So, uh, so let's, I'm just here playing. So let's go ahead and let's see. We wanted to look at one more thing. This is really great, though, if you're making things like picture frames. or yeah. And what's really awesome, um, well, okay, it could be bad, but it's really awesome. The bad thing is you can't come in here and delete this guy out because you'd have to collapse the stack on this object over here uh, because right now this modifier is dependent on this guy right here. But if I was to come back over here into, let's say, this view up here, let's go back top level, grab him, right click, and let's come back into vertex, and let's do some stuff. Like if I want to come in here, let's select move and maybe move this out. 
and let's zoom in a little bit down here as well so that you can see as I'm manipulating you can still delete okay. history on that though right so, well I have to collapse the stack but a little different uh, different thing but but yes grab this guy and let's go ahead and move it in both so I could round him out if I wanted to um, and uh, one last thing I even have the ability if I wanted to come in here and delete delete so I've deleted out um, you can see it's upside down. It needs to be flipped one more way, but that's cool. And also, with the line itself, can come down here, look up under geometry, and if I want to refine and add new lines in it, I can still refine, and it's adding no problem at all. So, okay? So definitely some really cool stuff. So there you go. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to, let's say we got one more thing to look at in this section right here, and that's the lathe modifier. So we'll go ahead and come back up top level. And let's go ahead and show you what I meant about it being dependent. I'll select this guy, the profile curve or profile spline, delete it, and look what happens. Profile's gone, so the modifier can't calculate it. Mm -hmm. Come over here, grab it, delete it, it's all gone. Last thing we have is the ever-popular lathe. So let's go ahead and come up here into the front viewport. Let's go ahead and go full screen. Come up, grab line and we want to build a we'll go not from a here ah oh, not a wine glass anybody builds a wine glass <laughs> so he knew what I was going to do so let's go for some sort of it's not that easy futuristic <laughs> anime robot yeah <laughs> let's draw a hand with six fingers so it's a fish hang on I got it all a salmon how did you know <laughs> It's a duck. Uh, that's good enough. I'll just come in here and modify in a second. And let's go ahead and right click. Let's come over here into Vertex. And let's take this guy right here and let's just move him actually down. And something like that right there. Okay. Now, and maybe this guy about right there. And I'm getting picky, but I can't help it. And this guy right click, <laughs> make a veggie corner. I'm trying to hurry. I'm trying to hurry. And... We'll give him a nice rounded look because he just wants that look. And we'll grab those things and tighten that up. Right about there. Okay, I'll stop. All right, back <laughs> up here. So here's what we want to do. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to apply a lathe. So I'll come all the way down the lathe. Modifier. Oh, boy, it looks pretty scary. That is kind of scary. Um, that's because we need to adjust where this axis is running right now. Basically, where the uh, lathe is being calculated, what we've got right now is a piece of geometry that's being created by sweeping the profile curve that we just created around a particular axis. Okay, and we can control right now, first of all, the direction of the axis. Uh, if we wanted it to go along X axis, hmm. along the Z axis, or by default what we saw along the Y axis, which just happens to work right for us in this case, uh, since we did make this in the front view for it. So we've got it going along the Y axis. Alignment, well let's go ahead and come in here and select our axes. So there's the actual axis itself, and since I've selected that from the modifier stack, I can come in here and actually move that. So as I move it, you can see I'm starting to take shape with my weird whatever you want to call it. But a really convenient thing to mess with is down here in an align, you can go align to the minimum. So it's the it'll actually align to the minimum the the axis will of the bounding box of this object, the uh, the furthest out element, or you could say to the center of it. Or you can say to the maximum. Cool. So there you go. We actually have it right there. So let's go ahead and come over here and look at perspective view. If you find your guts are inside out, as we see here, we simply need to flip normals. So we will flip our normals. Consult the position. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly. So there you go. And let's see. Segments, of course. We can turn our segments up, and this will make this rounded out a lot more down here at the bottom. Try spilling that wine. <laughs> Uh, I'm stable. <laughs> we also have, uh, if you've got, let's say, a little bit of space open in the bottom, you can tell it to weld the core. As a matter of fact, if we take a look down here, if we don't weld it, if we weld it, okay, what this does is it basically collapses all of our vertices at one point to a single point. Yeah, so that's taking shape a little bit better. Again, we have capping. Uh, capping works for if this guy, degrees-wise, is less than... Um, 360 degrees, and even though caps are on right now, 
The idea is for this guy to be filled in, but you don't see him filled in on the sides, do you? They're still open. The reason is our profile curve basically gave the outline of the shape of a of the glass, a profile of it. But let's see, actually, the best probably to show it by coming up here into this view. Uh, but it didn't come. Let's go back. It didn't actually come down here and close. If I come back to this guy right here and say, uh, let's go back down to vertex level, and I want to refine, we'll refine a single point right there. And now let's just grab this guy and move him on down on top of that guy down there at the bottom. And yes, we'll weld him. And let's take this guy right here and let's make him, let's make him a regular corner actually. And we'll just move him on out, something straight, right about like that. Close enough. Okay. Now let's come back up to the lathe. Now if we switch back over into our perspective view, now look what we've got. See how that's, well, hang on, let's flip our normals again. There we go. Now you see how it's actually solid filled in. So if you wanted to do an object that was cylindrical in shape that you could use the lathe to create, but you wanted to do a cutaway, yeah, this is, you'd have to make sure that that profile curve was a closed curve or closed uh, spline to actually generate something like this. So there you go with that. Again, we have the output type, uh, patch, mesh, or nerves, the ability to generate mapping coordinates, generate material IDs, and smooth and not smooth. Okay? So um, let me go ahead and show you how I kind of like to do this. If you're going to actually be working with a lathe, this is just, this is just a tip now. Uh, what I would do is I'm just going to come up here to line. I'm going to hold shift down and drag this guy over to the side, make a copy. I'm going to make the copy a reference type. Remember what a reference is, is one-way channel of communication. In other words, anything I do to this guy, the change original, the will change the other guy. But anything I do to this guy stays here. So type is a reference. I'll tell it OK. And now what I'll do is apply the lathe to my new reference guy so it won't work its way back uphill. So there's our lathe. And we'll go ahead and say go to the max. And so there it is. Look at that. So you're starting to learn. That's I know. awesome. You're starting to pick it up now. But now here's the beauty of this. I can now, just to make this easier to see, let's go ahead and come into a front viewport. It's a little bit huge. Let's grab this guy right here and move him over. Remember, regular transforms won't be felt. Now all i got to do is just come over here into vertex mode. And let's... Um, we can pull that and it'll edit that guy. Absolutely. We'll just Sweet. throw a, a refine in there. You could just see it at it right there. Uh, maybe I want to pull it out a little bit. Uh, maybe I want to adjust. Who knows? We're making <laughs> something to make uh, old Griswold a little happier over there. There's no wine glass you've ever seen before, boy. <laughs> But I hope not anyways. <laughs> so there we go. And uh, another refine, 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 refine. And you, 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 you. And let's just pull you on up just to give that little ridge down there. You, you. Actually, let's just take this over to a beige and something like that. But the idea that I'm trying to point out here is the fact that I can come in here and start generating weird, funky things like that. <laughs> special. It's like a toilet bowl. I was going to say special <laughs> type of plunger or. It's like some of my pottery and ceramics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yours turned out that nice. Yeah. You wouldn't want to see mine. But this real time feedback, though, really is uh, really is nice stuff. Okay. So uh, so that's working with the lathe for making rounded type things. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about in this section. Just taking some of the some of the actual uh, shapes that we created from the last section and then applying different types of modifiers that would take those shapes and generate geometry. And we looked at the extrude, we looked at bevel, we looked at bevel profile, and we looked at lathe. So that concludes this section. Thanks, guys.